We're going to start by uh, Stephen showing uh, uh, some short DVDs uh, before we go to the QA session. Yeah, we got the... Uh, is this on? Am I live? Well, I'll speak louder. We got the internet working. Protect your... This is a uh, video briefly explaining the, the concept of the handheld microphone. The current one, not the new one. Investment in fantastic sound. A microphone is no better than its capsule, no. and there are no better handheld okay. mic capsules no, no. than de facto capsules. Fantastic sound. The Is two vocal right? capsules are made to capture electrifying. Nah, skip it. I'll send it to you guys. Uh, the microphone is working. No, isn't it? A DPA. Anyways, Q and A. I think it's on. Can you guys hear me? Great. Can we do something about it or should we just do without uh, with a with a box? Maybe? <laughs> well, we <laughs> Does this work? Hello. Check. Check. One, two. Are we good? Is this working? Yes. Okay. So, so we go to Q and A. Anybody wants to ask question? So you were bought from the Riverside Company, right? Uh, a what, sorry? You were bought from the Riverside Company. Yeah. And so do uh, DPA have any subsidiaries right now? Uh, we have a, a company in the US, DPA Limited. But, but, uh, and then we have the Sound Network in the UK, which was our former distributor. Regarding the cost structure of your products, uh, I don't know if you want to tell it, but how much does the production account for? In your current product? Uh, one more time. Regarding your cost yeah. of your products, uh, I guess you have a profit margin of about 50% maybe. And so, so how much does your um, production cost currently account for? Uh, that's a lot. Uh, it depends on the different microphones. Uh, for instance, uh, this fella is, uh, we really don't make much money. But when we sell to distributors, it's uh, usually between a 35 and 50% discount of the suggested retail price. So we have the last 50% to work with, and, and it's 30% it's for this, if not more. Then we have all the overheads with the marketing and sales and stuff like that. So, but for the miniatures, they, they are easier to produce. They, they are, they are so, so we make more money on those. All right. So you were wondering, of, you were trying to put a microphone in a lower end uh, thing. Are you s set on doing that with the DPA brand, or could you also use like what what um, I think Renault was doing with a, like their cheap ass brand, mm -hmm. um, La uh, Dacia or whatever? That could be an option. I, I, th I think for. Uh the practical issues of doing that now with this set to launch at the end of year is, is, is it's not realistic. Mm -hmm. But it would be really interesting to hear the arguments, uh, pros and cons, in regards to doing that. Maybe if we decide to go across the board, do attainable products, 
that could be a way, uh, but we haven't uh, decided on how to do that yet. There is a discussion internally. Uh, all our microphones are labeled with the uh, four digits. So this is uh, the 4018, and there's the 4006. Then we have uh, some microphones in in this category, which are not made up of the same size of membrane, they are made up of two miniature microphones. They are labeled uh, the 2006 series, like a cheaper version without being really attainable. And uh, we are gonna later on come with some microphones that are gonna be labeled the, the 60 series. So that, that's a way of differentiating it within DPA, but it would be really yeah. interesting to hear pros and cons in regards to doing a sub-brand. Yeah, I think. Uh, how much, uh, how many microphones do you like uh, lose per batch? Uh, you mentioned you had very high testing requirements, so uh, some of them will inevitably be useless, but how many microphones are simply discarded for each batch you produce? It, it differs, uh, and, and actually it's all, it also differs depending on the time of year and the weather and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes 50%, sometimes less. <coughs> Uh, one more question. Hmm? Uh, do you have any backwards integration? Have you bought, it up, bought up any of your suppliers? Nope. Uh, and most of the stuff, mo all the essential parts are manufactured at us. Uh, the 406, we still buy some of the components from Brutland Care. But then uh, stuff like this, uh, this grid, for instance, is something we buy. It's not our speciality to do this kind, so we buy it from others. But we have so many issues with it. And that's also one of the reasons why we haven't sent all of this to China. First of all, it's the, the quality will fall. Second of all, if, if it's in China, it's not a secret anymore. Exactly. So everybody, we're already being copied on the looks and the Chinese manufacturers, they are proud. When we meet them at train shows and we go to the booth, oh, that looks like our 49.9. Yes, we like your microphone. Isn't it good that we produced it? Oh, it's not, but it's not the same sound. So it's just the same look and that's fine. But we have so much issue, especially uh, that's one of the main reasons that we have trouble uh, getting in, even though it's an expensive microphone, the production co uh, can't keep up. Uh, and most of it has to do with this grid because apparently we have so high quality standards that the, the guys li delivering to us can't do it proper. So we keep sending it back and saying, do it over. Would the goal with your new product be to just take market share from the others or actually mm, get some revenues from, or of course, uh, well, uh, uh, revenues from this microphone as well? Yes, we will. Okay. It will be cheaper to produce. And that, that's uh, all the keywords I put up there, that, that all those are done in order to make it cheaper to produce. Uh, and we're probably going to make uh, uh, Percentage-wise, more money on the the, the cheapo de facto than on this premium one. But again, keeping up with the high-end brand, we still want to sell this because. Um, you said that a lot of the price, um, a lot of the cost, uh, is because you produce everything in Denmark and. Um, here, yeah, here in Copenhagen. And um, what do the other competitors do, like Shure and um, Sennheiser? Do they also produce uh, in like uh, more expensive countries, or do they have like uh, outsourced things? Or they do uh, almost the same as we do. Uh, but okay. uh, for instance, Sennheiser, their premium brand of microphones are produced in Germany, or at least the essential parts. It's the same with us. The cabling, the, the connectors, all that stuff, we buy from other uh, vendors, but the essential, the capsule, and the print board, we do ourselves. Sennheiser has production facilities in Canada, Germany, Romania, and I think it's Malaysia. Okay, so and, but, but that's also because they have, they have uh, we are scaling down to their level of, uh, for this type of mic, but they also have products way down the line. Products for, for everybody that you can buy for a couple of hundred crones for a microphone 
hours. Uh, this one is, uh, I think it's uh, just below 4,000 Danish kroner for, for this microphone. And they produce microphones for 200 kroner. So basically it's not that realistic to um, outsource it or bring it to another country and you need full control of production. For the, the essential output. parts, the capsule and the print, uh, but maybe uh, the handle down here, maybe that could produce somewhere else. Okay. Yeah? Uh, can you tell us about the market position of the microphone? Like how many percentage you, you know, the... Of total market share? Uh, I mean, the, with competitors, like, uh, like I know the name of Shure and Sennheiser, but I never heard of DPA, so um, I just wonder how we many percentage you are. Uh, I've, the percentage, uh, that number is a bit old, so I won't state that, but we are very small. We are a niche brand. If we grew our company uh, fourfold, Sennheiser wouldn't even notice that they had lost market share. They they wouldn't even care. So so it's it's a steep ladder. We have a long way to go. But those people use our mics. They 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 swear to them. So it's an uphill struggle, but we'll get there. But it's it's a small market for us, and it's good I think because keeping this type of quality. We can't ramp up too fast. If if the it's it's an aggressive uh, expansion strategy, but if it was more aggressive, I think quality would fall. And then why buy DPA if the quality isn't top? So it has to be slow. Um, hi, could you elaborate a bit on the uh, customer segment for the seven hundred? dollar product and then maybe compare it with the customer segment, the primary customer segment for the thousand dollar product? For this particular mm -hmm. microphone? Yeah, for the vocal mic, yeah. It's the same. Okay. It's, it's completely the same segment. We are just trying to sell a microphone that's way better. Uh, so we are not scaling down to, to small productions. We are still talking the, the, the big stars or the people who really care about what output comes out here. And as I said, the investment is this is such a miniature part of the total cost. But you also mentioned that you wouldn't like to like cannibalize your, your uh, high-end product. In, do you see the market growing, or is it the same? Like the customer base, is it the same customer base? Uh, or are people more both. keen to invest more money over time? Yeah, both actually. The, the, um, the market for microphone I is growing uh, okay. rapidly, and that has a lot to do with uh, with both uh, the internet being the primary source of of all stuff being put out. There, there are so many more people producing content, but also if you look at the the, the traditional uh, broadcasters and TV station, what they need to do in order to make a difference in comparison to the internet and YouTube is live stuff. We are talking sports and big uh, singing shows, and for those you need a lot of mics. When you, use, when you do a, uh, a TV series, you need a handful of mics. When you do a live broadcast, you need mics for everybody. So the market is rapidly growing. Uh, that being said, uh, we are hoping to take market share from the others as well. Okay. Uh, that's why we price it down there. So, so we have an easier way of kicking in the door to some of, especially the rental houses, saying, look at this, and try this. Thanks. Can we, uh, in the future, see a company like you team up with other companies, let's say Apple, for their premium phones, or companies who provide uh, equipment for audio conferences, stuff like that? Uh, is that feasible? Yeah, we already do it. Uh, uh, Apple only uses our mics to measure their mics. Uh, we have uh, other different uh, collaborations we have with, they are called Maya Sound. They make uh, a crazy amazing system. It's for conference room or high-end restaurants. They put these uh, uh, systems in the ceiling that has a lot of our microphones and then some speakers. What they do is they 
uh, capture and measure the uh, audio and the ambience. So for instance, sitting in a very expensive restaurant, sitting with table here and here, with that system you can control that nobody else besides you on this table is hearing what you're saying. Or for instance, if a restaurant is too full or not full enough, you still want that ambience. So you can simply turn it up or down by this system. Or in big conference rooms like this, uh, you wouldn't even need that mic. You can just pinpoint. Uh, we have those kind of collaborations. We are looking into more within the broadcast market uh, for some products that are used when they do uh, electronic news gathering and stuff like that. <coughs> so whatever ideas you have within that, please. All right. Uh, hey. Um, so it seems like um, there's a lot of, uh, of the price that's actually being inflated uh, throughout the sales channel, um, or the sales chain. And it's not necessarily adding a lot of value because they miss out on a lot of the, the specs and the knowledge of the sound and the microphones. So I wondered how much have you actually engaged your, ambassador, your current ambassadors, since you also say it's targeting uh, roughly the same market segment, what do they think about that? How do they think that this microphone could be best uh, communicated to the, the current uh, customer base? And uh, They haven't been told yet. They haven't? No, okay. you guys are the first to hear, so. Okay. <laughs> we don't know yet. Uh, but yeah, but, but uh, you say with a lot of the value you, is left uh, out of the chain. That, that's, that's the standard way of doing it. 50% yeah. for the distributor and they pass on between 10 and 20% to the dealer. Yeah. That, that's how it works. But just at the top of my mind, it seems like the ambassadors would be the key persons to sort of communicate the difference between having the highest, highest end product and then this lowest end, and they could communicate what are people compromising. Yeah. Good idea. Get them to do some testing and statements and yeah. bring it out to people. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, are your competitors also make microphone um, handmade? Is it somehow some automated stuff or something? Mostly handmade. Mostly handmade. Yeah. We are looking into uh, automizing some of the processes uh, just to get a more consistent output. For instance, the technology I mentioned before, the Core by DPA, which is a new uh, print plate technology, a lot of that is uh, manufactured by robots just because it's so small. So how do the geographical location, so you discussed about you have some production in China or in Hong Kong, is it the functional structure before the geographical structure or is it geographic, geographical and then like a more functional structure? Uh, you're asking so if so it's so just historically you, based yeah, or? Do you have? History. Yeah, so how do how do you actually, do I have the development, all the development in Denmark, for example? Or do you have like certain projects in different countries all over the world? All R&D is done in Denmark. Uh, okay. The reason it's in LOL right now is because Bruel and Care was located not that far away. So when the two guys started DPA, they didn't want to move too far. The production facility in Asnes, that's because that's where Mufone was located the hearing aid company that we merged with. That's the reason for that. And in, uh, in USA, US, the, the head office over there in, is located in, what's it called? Somewhere in Colorado, in the middle of nowhere. And that's because the guy they hired first to do some stuff in the US, that's where he lived. There's no logistical reason for it, but that's how it is. Pardon? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, like, uh, you talked about the three things like durability you talked about. I would like to hear 
uh, if the durability you means that uh, it's a long lasting lifetime or it, whether if it is uh, robustness or I would like to hear a bit more about that because I think it's uh, overlapping a bit. What, uh, what are you mainly focusing on? Is it robustness or a lo long life? Uh, uh, what are you fo focusing on? It, uh, it depends a little bit upon, about the product. Uh, for instance, these, we know they are going to take a lot of abuse. They are on the live stage, they will be dropped by Celine Dion, they will be uh, dropped in the tour bus, they will be thrown away everywhere. So they need to be really robust. That being said, this uh, capsule uh, is very long lasting. It, it, if you don't drop it or put in the wrong current or whatever you do, it will last for forever, pretty much. Uh, there's a back plate uh, which has been charged with a voltage and the half time of that is 180 years or something. So they should technically perform just as well in 100 years. Uh, the miniature mics, they need to be small and uh, very light, uh, so they, they break easily, easily uh, but that's because they need to be able to be hidden. So it's a cost-benefit kind of deal. But we have had a, uh, one of uh, these, I have no idea how they did it, but this pipe was totally squashed and it was sticking out like that. And uh, our technician, he just kind of bent it out a little bit, pushed it on the side, and it worked. We measured it. It was uh, almost on, on spec. So they last as well. Where was the question? Hello. Hi. Oh, well, uh, I had, uh, I think, three questions. Uh, the first one was, uh, will there be any way of contacting you? I've uh, been told that it will be, uh, you will send the, c the questions to one person and they will collect them and structure them so it's okay. not the same questions over oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and it will of be course. sent as a package. Yeah, all right. Okay, so. Okay. Um, I think you had you had. Uh, uh, within last year, we each class we collect uh, mm -hmm. the questions, and one uh, responsible of the TAs of each class or from the, the group of this uh, project, with this challenge, will send them the, the mail. They will answer us, and then we share with you. Okay. So sorry. Oops. Uh, so, uh, so my main question was, uh, you have this opportunity spectrum. Uh, what uh, controls the lower end of the spectrum? Uh, one more time. So you have, uh, the, on your graph, you have the opportunity spectrum. And what sets the lower end of the spectrum? Because it's still, according to the graph, outside the priciest of your company's uh, competitor's product. And do you have any data on, because you have mentioned three specific mics, which I assume then that your, the, the, the customer base for the AVM would be those customers that purchase those products. Mm. Do you have any data on, <clears throat> on that customer base? Do you know, have any data on uh, uh, how many, how, how it's distributed, how, how large it is? Uh, do you have any data on their expectations uh, if they, like, do you have any like data on on the requirements and, and like, for what would they pay extra for, and how much more? N not something I can send, unfortunately. We had All we right. had a report done, but uh, it cost a lot of money, and I'm sure both uh, <laughs> Sure and Sennheiser would love to get their money. <laughs> All right, so uh, you have that data. Yeah, but we we want to price it the same as the competitors. You want to price it the same as competitors. Yeah, I, uh, the graph is me hand drawing. I'm not an okay. engineer. Uh, but if you look at the next slide, uh, you will get them there. It's priced as the competitor. We don't want to go below okay. because that will uh, uh, cost in, in regards to the quality. We still want to be just a little bit better than the competitors, priced yeah. at the same. Okay, just, yeah, it was confusing from the opportunity spectrum because, in my opinion, if you would price it 
like in the middle of what the opportunity spectrum mm. says here, uh, the only customers you would be possibly taking away from the de facto would be other de facto customers. Yeah. And it could have been cheaper, but that was something they considered in the beginning. I didn't feel it was uh, value for you to, to see the entire spectrum because they had it all the way down because we decided that's okay. not something we want to do. We, d we don't want to go cheaper. Okay, so, but data-wise, we would, if we would want any data to support our arguments, we would have to get them ourselves. Yeah, do some desk research there. There, there okay. is stuff out there that you can get a hold of. Okay, thank you, you very much. You have access to the oh. research databases, right? I know there's one report, uh, may, maybe you can find, I don't know what it's called, but there is a report out there regarding the microphone market. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, so it's, it's just to kind of elaborate on, on what you told earlier. You, you said that um, your product is very niche market because of the high quality and high price. Uh, so what you basically expect is that you go outside of this niche market and, and then go into the broader market that has the same size as your competitors. Hopefully. I, I mean, the market is the same, but, but we are a niche product for that market because uh, we are so high-end and so expensive that it's only the best audio engineers that understand right now why it's a better decision to choose DPA. Uh, do you have any particular marketing strategy? Yes, but I would love to hear your input on that. Okay. We, we have made loads of ideas and stuff we want to do, but, but that, that, that's also the point of of this case is getting challenged a little bit on all our strategies, both in sales, marketing, and R&D, and, and see the stuff we haven't thought of. And I, I think if I give that to you, it, I, I've, it will probably narrow your mind a little bit, and I want to see the other stuff instead. And I just wonder, do you going to get some kind of, you know, the document beside this slide to describe your challenges and everything? Uh, not besides the, the case. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you about your ambassadors. Um, do you have some idea of how many percent? Uh, it, it seems to me that it's some kind of uh, marketing uh, channel. Um, but how, how big a percentage would you say that those guys are? I'm, I'm thinking about if some of us came up with an idea to uh, expand on these amb ambassadors. How, how much? Yeah, what, what, what are the influence that they have in kind of a, a percentage on your marketing scheme? Oh, I can't give a percentage on that. It's something we use actively uh, because they, they are very authentic and they don't say something they don't mean. Even though they are within the DPA realm, they only say what they feel. Uh, and when they are engaged on forums and out there showing the microphones, that's what they need to do. Uh, but we can easily ask them to do videos, reviews, contact people, and stuff like that. So, so it, it is kind of a big deal. I'm, I'm thinking about, I, I, um, I haven't heard about you before this uh, case, so, so I'm thinking you, you're not really that kind of a, a company that goes into TV commercials, uh, no. magazines, all, all these uh, not even Facebook, I don't know. Uh, you are on Facebook. You are, you are on Facebook. Um, that's, yeah, that's a big channel, channel today. Uh, so, yeah, what, what I was thinking about was um, just, uh, as you said, uh, about the, uh, yeah, what I'm saying is that I, I, I think I have, I, I think I want, got what I wanted. Yeah, but uh, let me outline a little bit some of the things yeah. that we are doing because uh, the forums is a big deal. The people involved in audio are usually very engaged in it. They love it. It's, it's their life works. There's a forum called Gear Slots, and that's the main forum. And we want to have a bigger presence there. We want to use the ambassadors to have a bigger presence there. We are right now discussing with them how we can do a setup. We want to do different stuff, AMAs and stuff like that on that. 
Uh, we use uh, social channels a lot. Uh, our key customers are still very in tune to, uh, for instance, Facebook, so that is our primary channel. We go a lot of paid advertising on that, and it's working really well for us. Uh, then we still do print. Um, if you look at a lot of other markets, you would say that print is dead. It is, but for our market, it still works a little bit because still people still read magazines. And what's even more important, the only way to get the magazines to review our microphones is by buying print advertisement. That, that's kind of the deal. Not We can't tell them what they should review it as, but if we buy print advertisement, they, then they say, oh, is there some of your products you, we should review? So that's why we still buy print. You said it was gear slot? Gear slots. Gear slots. Okay. Thanks. With, with a C. Set, I think it's called, sorry. Hi. Um, so, for the new product, uh, are you looking into optimizing some of the handmade processes uh, to, put, to get the cost down? And do you have a specific strategy to keep up with the customer demand if, let's say, you, you get a big portion of the competitors' uh, customers? Not yet uh, for the strategy, but some of the processes will be more automated. And that also has to do with we are lowering the quality standards. Uh, when we're measuring mics, we usually have a very tight spectrum of where it's allowed to be uh, located, how the microphone performs. We will expand this a little bit. Uh, so again, the consistency that I talked about in the beginning will be lowered a little bit. But just to follow up on that, um if you are, you are, you are, you should have this uh, product on market this year, right? Mm -hmm. And you think you're able to put up the production facilities for the demand by this year, if let's say the demand explodes? Uh, yes, if the estimates are correct, which they never are. Yeah. Uh, f we just launched uh, the core, as I said, uh, for the miniature microphones, and we had expected this amount of microphones being sold in the first three months, we got orders for this. So right now we have a delivery time on these miniature microphones that's uh, six or eight weeks, usually we deliver within two. Uh, so they totally blew it. And, and maybe we've, because we don't know the market, so maybe we'll be guessing wrong. We are asking our masters, we're asking our distributors, our area sales managers, and some of the dealers we have contact with, but they are guessing as well. And then we add up, multiply, divide, and cross our fingers. Yeah. Other? Yeah. Uh, the target price was a seven hundred dollars. Were was the dollar in currency? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, do you know who is the customer for that particular product? It's the same as uh, our premium. We are still in the high end of this market. So, so it's the same people, uh, but we're hoping to expand our share, of course. As I said, we don't want to cannibalize our current offering. We want to expand that offering. Uh, okay. We still believe that, and that's why we're going to have a big difference between the quality and the, the output quality of this microphone. So those are the professional yeah. musicians over some, some old Okay. Yeah, and if, if, they, if this is their first uh, DPA product, the new uh, cheap de facto, uh, then we can easily convince them why they should buy DPA for the rest of their setup. Other questions? Great. Have you all got what you want to know at this stage? Well, sounds like it. So, oh, we have got one more here. I was thinking in terms of the uh, star model, uh, where you have your, you have a big production facility in Denmark, so that includes a lot of people. So I was thinking, uh, how do you, what, what is your um, model of uh, reward system? Uh, do, do you have benefits uh, or? Uh, do you, do you have some way, some certain way of motivating people? Uh, the the production 
Start yeah, uh, bonus schemes. Or? Yeah, some, some bonuses may have, it could be a, uh, a lot of things. We, we treat the, the employees very, very well. They get a, uh, a high salary uh, compared to, to usual uh, salary for non-educated manufacturing cost, and our employees are there forever. Uh, some of them have been there since the beginning. Uh, ten years is, is normal. And if you look at that area, Astus, it's, it's one of the main areas of work if you, you don't get a, a long education. And uh, they, they are usually pretty proud. And we make sure that every time we get a good story, uh, for instance, the Celine Dion story, make sure to push it over there so they see where the product is going. We also have uh, uh, some of our key uh, distributors and clients. Uh, the guy doing audio for Metallica, for instance, the last time they had a, uh, a concert in Denmark, he got a tour of the, of the facility uh, and all these, uh, all the staff get to meet him and shake hands and he gets to ask them questions. So, so they, they are rather proud. So. Then I suggest that uh, we give another hand to Stephen. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to seeing your, uh, your answers and suggestions for, for these challenges. And when you have more questions, talk with the TAs and uh, they will collect uh, questions for uh, further to Stephen, yeah. I think we can repeat as we did last year. So uh, you need to submit the questions at the end of the week. If you don't submit at the end of the week, it will be postponed for the next week. So there's a process. So you, then we hope uh, it works the same time, the same way as before. That's it. Thank you.